I'm sure you guys remember when I looked at Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey a couple months ago, that public domain Winnie the Pooh horror movie that was somehow legal. In that video, I very briefly talked about a Grinch horror movie that came out called The Mean One that I've been way too curious to not check out. Not because I actually wanted to watch the movie or anything, but more so like... How is this allowed, <laughs> right? Because this is not a case like Winnie the Pooh where like that's in the public domain and anyone can do what they want with it now. I'm very sure that the Grinch and all of Dr. Seuss's works are very much still owned by somebody. Otherwise, I would have already made a Cat in the Hat slasher film by now and made a million dollars. Wikipedia even calls it an unauthorized retelling, which suggests to me that it shouldn't be allowed to exist, right? And yet it was released in theaters not even that long ago. I think it was like December last year. But I haven't heard anything about this movie at all. With Blood and Honey, I heard a little bit about it on Twitter and Reddit, and then, like, it was advertised at Hoyt's, the cinema I went to to go see it. But with this one, like, I only found it because I was looking up films similar to Blood and Honey. But it still hasn't been released on streaming yet, just like Winnie the Pooh, because it takes, like, forever for these lower-budget films to get picked up by someone. So it's gonna be a bit of a struggle to do this video without any footage or clips at all, but I'll do my best. The Mean One does keep some Dr. Seuss elements in there, like, they have a rhyming narrator throughout the movie. The main character is Susie, you know, the girl from the movie. They even have a character literally called Dr. Zeus. <laughs> I'm not making this up. The Grinch even has the same motivation. Like, he's literally the same character. He hates Christmas, and in this one, he kills anyone who celebrates it, which he was really only, like, an R rating away from doing in the Jim Carrey one anyway. <laughs> it takes very blatantly from the Jim Carrey Grinch, like, in the way that he moves and does, like, a lot of physical comedy. But he doesn't talk, though. He just makes, like, gremlin noises throughout the whole film, which is a huge missed opportunity, if you ask me. Like, you may as well just go all the way if you're already ripping off Jim Carrey by that point. But he actually does a pretty good job, all things considered. I'll give you a basic outline of the plot because, yes, I actually did watch it. It starts off with like a flashback of Susie's mom getting killed on Christmas Day, and then 20 years later, her therapist tells her to return to the town of Newville, where they have since banned Christmas to avoid the Grinch ever showing up again. It's the usual thing where, like, as soon as she returns to the town, the killer comes back, and like, no one else has seen it, so they don't believe her. It's you've seen it a hundred times. And then the twist at the end, which you've also seen a hundred times, is that it turns out the police and the mayor knew about the Grinch and they were keeping it at bay by like feeding it tourists or something. This one's a lot more tongue-in-cheek than the Winnie the Pooh one though because at the end Susie literally undergoes a rocky training montage to fight the Grinch to the death. It pretty much turns into an action movie in the last 10 minutes which yeah was actually almost kind of awesome and then when she beats him at the end his heart grows three times and fucking explodes and kills him which was honestly kind of nice after Winnie the Pooh ended on like such depressing sequel bait but that still does beg the question of how any of this is allowed. So I really wanted to look into it myself and figure out how exactly this isn't just straight up copyright infringement. So it turns out that the mean one is completely covered under parody law, which is even more vague and confusing than the public domain, if you ask me. When using copyrighted material in things like a news report or a game review show, or even maybe a YouTube video about someone else's movie, there's this really cool law called fair use or fair dealings over here in Australia. That is pretty much the only thing that allows me to keep my job that grants exceptions to the usage of copyrighted material if it's for the purpose of research, review, news, or parody and satire. Which, given how strict copyright usually is, is actually really, really cool. And I really, really don't ever want them to change it, or else I will have to go work at McDonald's. Fair use is an extremely all encompassing copyright law. Like, there was a whole fuss back in the day of whether you would be allowed to, like, record TV on VHS tapes and whether that could be considered fair use, because I guess technically you would be making copyright of copyrighted material, but for once the courts actually did decide that it would count because I guess they knew it would be impossible to actually enforce that. And of course it has had an enormous impact on how YouTube works and is pretty much one of the only reasons that any of us are allowed to do this at all. So basically you are legally allowed to lift similar ideas and visuals ranging from either literally just showing actual clips, like I don't know some lazy asshole, or making a movie with someone else's characters, but it must use that original work to form an entirely different experience in some way, is basically the gist of it as far as I understand it. Again, this may surprise you, but I am not a lawyer. <laughs> Which I guess this kinda does, like, if you don't already consider the Jim Carrey movie a horror. Which is why in videos like this where I talk about someone else's work, it's really important to me to do something other than just like recapping the plot of the movie, because by law that means that my video would not fall under fair use, because it can't serve as a replacement for watching the actual movie. <laughs> Unlike those fucking like robot voice recap channels on YouTube, like seriously, 
how are those allowed? It's not really clearly outlined what exactly you're not allowed to use or like how far you can push it really. Because like, for example, in those god awful like mid 2000s parody movies, like, you know, epic movie and scary movie and all that shit, which was so terrible. I'm surprised they didn't like remove parody lore completely where they just straight up have like the actual character from other films being in there and like using their actual names and everything. Like they're not even being subtle or clever about it. I am Iron Man. But then there was this thing I noticed in the trailer where they would always interrupt themselves before they say the word Grinch. He's slippery, he's elusive, he's a mean one, that mister. And they do it in the actual movie too. There's a scene in the movie where they're at like a bar and like two characters are about to say the word Grinch and like a bartender interrupts them and calls out the name Finch instead, which was about as funny as it sounds, yeah. I think it's something to do with like the director was saying they weren't allowed to use like the specific language from the book or something like that, which is so weird because they can like literally have the Grinch in the movie, right? But they just can't say his name. Like that's the line, <laughs> like what? No one really makes spoof movies anymore because they were like so oversaturated and terrible in like that 2000s period that the mean one does look kind of unusual on its own, but it's definitely not the first of its kind to like use original ideas to shift the genre into something else. One of the most famous spoof movies of all time, Airplane, pretty much just takes verbatim the plot and characters from some like obscure 50s movie called Zero Hour to the point where it's almost a shot for shot remake of it at times, except that obviously they changed it into a comedy film, which is pretty much what the mean one does, I guess. The director did vaguely explain that because the movie has like comedic elements that does mean that it meets the requirements to be considered a parody unfortunately it's the reason we've ended up with such classics as harry potty and diary of a farting creeper which yeah no i'm still not quite sure how that one isn't just straight up illegal so that means you don't even have to wait for the public domain to kick in so i'm really surprised this doesn't happen more often i've also always assumed that's how like porn parodies get away with it, right? By like pretending to be comedies by having like one or two jokes in there before they show like Misty from Pokemon getting violently railed. First I need to know what type of Strokemon that is before I figure out how I'm gonna capture it. Better use your Strokodex. Hey, that's a good idea, cock. I will. Or maybe they just don't want to go to court and have to actually watch any of them. Generally, I think you would only have to step in if it was actually affecting sales of the original material. Like it must be really bad if you want to make a public fuss of something like Edward penis hands. <laughs> But to use another example of one of Dr. Seuss's works, there was a parody book of the Cat in the Hat that was released that like used the same structure as the book to retell the events of the O.J. Simpson murder trial. That was not considered fair use in court because the author didn't use the material to parody Dr. Seuss, just to lift his style to satirize something else, which isn't considered parody according to the law. So basically that's how the meme one gets around it. In terms of like production, I'd say it's closer to being a real movie than Blood and Honey. Like it almost kind of has acting and characters. There's like a sheriff and a mayor and that's already more than Winnie the Pooh. The lead actor is like actually pretty good and the Grinch costume honestly doesn't look too bad. At least as far as I know they actually fucking made it themselves instead of just buying it online. Even if it is just like basically identical to the Jim Carrey Grinch with barely any changes. I just feel like it should be a lot funnier for something that's meant to be like you know, a parody. Not just in the sense of like what I personally found funny, but more so that there's just not really that many jokes in the movie. Like there were some that were like pretty good, but for the most part, it's just a lot of like characters standing around and taking it super seriously, which makes it feel so long. So honestly, I don't really have all that much to say about it, which is why I've been talking about copyright law this entire video. Just like Winnie the Pooh, I really think it should have leaned a lot more into the silliness of it. It would have made it significantly more fun to watch, I think. There's not nearly as much information on like the production of this one than there was for Winnie the Pooh, which really sucks because I am like way more interested in like how this movie came together. I, I can't even find the budget anywhere, but like it made about $600,000, which was probably more than they spent on it, I'm assuming. There's been like one interview with the director that like 50 different sites have just like paraphrased, but essentially he said that the idea came from like when they had a commercial shoot they were going to do that got cancelled, so they were left with like a bunch of free time. So obviously, you know, their first thought was to make like a fake Grinch horror movie trailer that was never meant to be a full movie that he just did like for fun. And then when he showed it to a bunch of like his friends, they were like, oh dude, you should totally turn this into a full movie. And I bet they definitely don't regret that decision at all. So yeah, it's been like four months since it came out in the cinemas. So I imagine it will come to streaming eventually if you really want to check it out. So overall, I'd give it like a nine out of 10. At least it's not as bad as Winnie the Pooh. And now that this video was technically a review, they can't sue me. <laughs> Thanks for watching.